Hello, welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be explaining haemoglobin saturation and the oxygen dissociation curve. So, as you can see here, I've got a graph that you're probably familiar with showing the partial pressure of oxygen and the percentage saturation of haemoglobin with oxygen. So what does that mean? Well, saturation basically means how much of the haemoglobin is actually carrying oxygen. So if it was 100% saturated, that would mean that all of the haemoglobin is completely occupied carrying oxygen. So we need to know why it has this shape and we need to know the effect of a couple of things on this dissociation curve. So firstly, you can see that the actual increase in saturation is slower at the very start as the partial pressure increases. Now the reason for that is because of the structure of haemoglobin. Now each haemoglobin molecule can carry four O2 molecules, but because of the structure of it, it's actually more difficult for the first O2 to bind. But once that first oxygen molecule binds to haemoglobin, that changes the structure of haemoglobin slightly, and that means that the next three can bind more easily, which is why we get this increase in the rate at which the saturation occurs. So that's why we have that shape. And haemoglobin is very well adapted to carry oxygen and roughly in the partial pressures of oxygen that we find in the lungs that would lead to approximately 100% saturation which shows how well adapted the haemoglobin is in humans. Now we need to know the effect of a couple of things on this curve. Now if carbon dioxide levels increase what we get is the curve shifting slightly to the right. Now this is called the ball shift, uh, but I prefer to know it as the fun shift, because it's not boring. So. so that is with the presence of higher levels of CO2. Now the reason for this is because increased CO2 levels in the blood increases the acidity. So it increases the acidity inside the red blood cells. And that increased acidity actually changes the structure of haemoglobin again, slightly changes the shape make it more difficult for haemoglobin to bind. So if we're in the same partial pressure, it will actually be less saturated, as in less oxygen is being carried by haemoglobin when there's more carbon dioxide. So they may ask you to explain the importance of this. So the importance of this is because in respiring cells and tissues, they're going to be producing a lot of CO2. And those respiring cells or tissues will have a high demand for oxygen. So in a place in the body where there's a high amount of carbon dioxide, the haemoglobin has a, a lower affinity for oxygen. Or we could say it's going to give it up more easily. So haemoglobin that's carrying oxygen into areas where there's a high amount of CO2 are going to give up their oxygen to the surroundings and provide that oxygen to those respiring cells for respiration. So that is what happens and that's the bore shift related to carbon dioxide. Another thing that we can also link into this is fetal haemoglobin. So we can actually move this curve slightly to the left. My lines aren't perfectly drawn but they're just show, illustrating the point. So in fetal haemoglobin what we can see is that that same partial pressure, fetal haemoglobin has a higher affinity, it's more saturated than normal haemoglobin, which is the middle line. Now that is because the fetus obviously needs to get its blood from the mother through the placenta. So in the same partial pressures where the mother's haemoglobin would be giving up oxygen, the fetal haemoglobin is able to take on that oxygen. So it's able to take the oxygen from the mother's blood and bind to that oxygen. That oxygen in the blood can then be carried to the fetus, to all the cells of the fetus, allowing them to carry out respiration, grow and develop. So that is um, haemoglobin, oxygen dissociation and percentage saturation. Hopefully that video is helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you have any uh, requests for videos, please leave a comment. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Rushliff Bio. Thank you very much.